Hi guys, today I'll be uh, working on the card that got sent in. Uh, the card is fully functional. It's a micro SD made by SanDisk. Now, uh, this task is going to be data extraction after format with Sony A7 Mark III. It may sound like getting data from the cards that get formatted isn't a big deal and any data recovery software you can download online will be able to do that. At least that's what every single post on YouTube on how to recover data after formatting will tell you. Many cameras will format the card in a way that uh, data recovery software will allow you to reconstruct content after having it scanned and uh, saved to another device. However, with Sony A7 Mark III specifically, that's what we're gonna discuss today and that's what we're gonna work with today, that will not be the case. The card will get formatted and the way uh, Sony A a7 Mark III does it is that it will zero out the translator. So the translator will start the card as if it's uh, running a, a clean surface, like there is nothing on it. Everything will appear to be empty uh, without taking time to actually wipe out those sectors. Physically, the data is still on the device. But logically, it doesn't exist. This card has been formatted by Sony A7 Mark III about 10 new images were taken. A uh, client who reached out to us uh, said that they tried some data recovery software, but nothing was found. Here's the interesting part, is that when Sony uh, A7 Mark III did the format on this card, it only took a few seconds to perform. What happens in few seconds? You gotta understand that this card is a 64 gigabyte unit. In order to fill 64 gigabyte unit with a certain pattern, it will take some time. It will not happen instantly. It will not even happen. It will not even happen within minutes. It will take, um, you know, a good chunk of time for the camera because, in order to empty it out completely, you will have to literally write every block with a pattern to make sure there is no content left. Previous cameras would only erase the beginning. Put new, put new file system in the place of the old one, and then the card thinks there's nothing else that exists on the device because the file system is new, but old blocks remain untouched. So recovering old blocks with data recovery software on cards that are formatted with older cameras would, uh, would be uh, a simple thing. Not anymore. This card has been formatted with A7 Mark III, and let me show you what we're visualizing after a format that only took a few seconds. I don't really need to connect it directly to a, a USB stabilizer, but just because I have it, I plug everything you know, <laughs> into it uh, these days, just because it uh, also uh, prevents any kind of activity going into the card uh, forced by Windows as well. Then I'm plugging in to the adapter. The card is already plugged in. Control panel, select the tool and power on the tool. With the tool powered on, our log shows that the 60 gigabyte device is mounted, it locates a project path for it, everything is great. Uh, the card is functional, it's not corrupt or anything, we don't have to, uh, you know, perform anything unusual to get, uh, just to get communication with this device, the card communicates perfectly. So if I open our studio, we should have no problems locating the card through our studio, and uh, it's located right there preview of what's on the device. So if we scroll down, we can see that predominantly it just consists of zeros. There's some data at the beginning, um, but then it's, it gets empty uh, down and further very quickly. Uh, again, this is a 64 gig device. Uh, in order for the camera to zero out the entire card, it would take a while. And because this formatting, according to the client's description, was formatted within seconds, zeros that we see are coming from the translator. Translator says that there's nothing there. So similar to like trim operation, uh, the data got trimmed out. And now when the device is trying to locate a logical address for something that was there before, translator says that there's nothing there. Physical access may uh, show us different results. An assembly based on the block number uh, is going to give us um, a volume that at least can be explored and content can be recovered from 
in the uh, uh, raw uh, format, uh, meaning that there's not gonna be original structure, but at least by file types, we can find some, some content and make sense of it. Let's get this uh, thing stripped down, expose the uh, NAND protocol uh, technical pads, and I have a quick connector to attach this to, so we don't even have to do any wiring uh, whatsoever. It will just make all the connections instantly, and we can begin reading NAND protocol on the unit. So here we have the protective film. SendDisk, I think, is the only company that uses uh, something like this to cover up the uh, NAND protocol pads. just clean up all of this excess now this is a an adapter that I'll use and uh, that way we don't have to make any uh, manual wire connections to communicate um, with the cards and protocol everything is already routed into this interface here this is just a test uh, task that I'm opening up to see if it's gonna give us any improvements over what is showing up so we're gonna read the ID right now um, yeah it still reads 87 uh, and 87 actually is a valid ID from what it shows on this machine uh, let's go ahead and read the chip in direct mode for now optimal speed looks pretty standard to me and start reading it into a dump file all right so now that we have our uh, content extracted and error corrected uh, we can pull up information about uh, the uh, error correction uh, ranges so our ranges are 2208 and uh, if we look at the map of, of uh, corrected uh, sectors if we look in the invalid sectors map we end up with 700 uh, plus uh, megabytes of uh, uncorrected sectors those sectors could potentially be reread and fixed uh, also but uh, since it's uh, give or take uh, one percent or so of the entire content I'm not gonna worry about it too much I want to see if we actually do get uh, to explore some content first and if it needs improvement later we can always come back to it and improve it afterwards so we'll close it up for now uh, error correction is 99% clean uh, we're good to move forward so the first step we need to take is to um, explore what options we have for XOR if we go into uh, data inspection and XOR analysis it gives us three options uh, looking at them here, we have uh, block that's 128, we have block that's 16 and 8. Um, let's uh, go ahead and try to analyze this. So these two are coming up as more valid ones. If we give it more time, maybe things will shift around. But for now, it's there's not that many to choose from. We can validate them as we go later. I'm going to choose the most probable one that it selects for now and go with it. So uh, this device automatically, uh, this disk SOAR analysis automatically adds page transformation. I'm going to get rid of the step and redo it manually. So if we go into XOR conversion element in the uh, page designer, we see that we have our page consisting of uh, 17664. If we pull up a calculator and type in um, 2208 times uh, 8 times, uh, we get the same number. So it equally splits into eight zones and those eight zones uh, will need to be divided later on as well. So let's go ahead and split this into eight pieces. Uh, we know that first 14 are going to be uh, uh, for the marker. And we know that first part of this is going to be data. And we know that uh, 
in this length we have four sectors of 512 so we can split it proportionally into two uh, sorry four pieces and there we have it. so our marker and our data gets added And split this into eight parts. This is a standard thing for uh, SanDisk. Uh, let's have a look at the neighboring ones um, for selection. Yeah, that looks much better. So um, these, the first element is going to be joined by pages. Second element is also joined by pages. And this one is joined by block. Uh, now that the mix is seems to be built uh, we can run raw recovery to see what kind of results we get now this is a memory card uh, that was inside of a camera so we don't really have any intricate file structures we don't have um, something that uh, would really be in the need of uh, that file structure other than video files video files they're fragmented so file structure puts them together to get video running in a situation like this we definitely need a file structure to be built. Primary target here was extracting photos and uh, to extract photos we will be uh, more than happy with raw recovery in this case and whatever it can give us. So I'm looking at the extracted content here for now. Uh, it finds bits and chunks of Canon RAW. Uh, I don't know if that's, if that's the stuff that the client is looking for uh, but again uh, the card was uh, overwritten with some images um, partially uh, and we also have an option that maybe the XOR that we've selected isn't the right one so I'm gonna let it run for about maybe 5% actually if it's already at 5% I think uh, we surpassed the point of what new content would be taking over and uh, I still see that the sizes that it's locating here they're pretty small they're not uh, up to what they are supposed to be for Sony uh, camera raw image those are massive files. Um, let's uh, do something here. Let's push it forward a bit. I'll jump Q and uh, fast track it a little bit to see if it's locating somewhere in the midsection. Doesn't really show us anything. So uh, let's go back and uh, over here where the XOR is, uh, let's go edit and choose a different candidate because uh, it doesn't seem like the XOR that we've had uh, there matched up. So we're going to go with 1872. That was the next probable one. Uh, we're going to select that instead and uh, run raw recovery once again. Uh, in parameters, we can also start not from the beginning, but somewhere further and uh, see what this is going to bring us and we see a completely different picture um, we see uh, raw images that are in much bigger size explore some of those larger files do they open or not it seems like they're open 1300 images were saved maybe not all of them will work uh, and if some critical ones are damaged we may have to reread the card to improve the quality uh, but uh, they also may be damaged because uh, they were partially overwritten with the new uh, photos that were taken with the camera after the formatting was done after the formatting was done uh, 10 images had been shot with the camera 
so some of the files that were underneath there uh, would definitely get hit by that uh, but overall if you look at the uh, thumbs of the project pictures are there the venue is saved if you guys need data extraction after format that was done by Sony a7 mark 3 check the link in the description we'll be able to help you out those of you who watch this channel on a regular basis thanks for tuning in again for those of you who are new don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in data recovery this is what this channel is all about if you have any questions drop them in the comments below guys thank you very much again and i'll see you all in the next episode